Welcome back to Lab Wednesday. This is Dr. Ergin, your sugar MD, your necronologist. Let's talk about one of the most common misunderstood markers in all of metabolic health. It's not cholesterol, it's not A1C, it's not blood pressure. I'm talking about triglycerides, the single most powerful, most overlooked predictor of metabolic disease. And honestly, if people understood what their triglycerides were trying to tell them, we would prevent half of the diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver, and weight loss struggles. I see in my clinic every week at Diabetes, Thyroid, and Hormone Center of the Treasure Coast in Port St. Lucie, Florida. So today, I'm going to break this down for you in plain human language. By the end of this video, you're going to understand exactly what triglycerides actually are or why they matter more than almost any other labs in your labs. So what your triglycerides are trying to tell you about your metabolism and most importantly, how to fix them quickly, right? So stick with me because this is one of the topics where once you know the truth, you will never look at your labs the same way again. All right, triglycerides, right? So what are they? Well, think of them as the fat your body packages and ships out into your bloodstream when you have got more energy than you can use or store safely. So they are basically the metabolic UPS trucks carrying extra calories, mostly from sugar and refined carbs, out of your liver into your blood. Now, high triglycerides don't mean you're eating too much fat. That is the myth. It might be that, you know, if you're eating too much fat and carbs, like fast foods, definitely. But if you're eating healthy fats without carbs, that's not going to do that. High triglycerides almost always mean there is too much sugar, too much insulin, or too much liver stress, and your body has flipped into the fat storage mode instead of fat burning mode. This is why I tell my patients, your triglycerides are like the metabolic smoke alarm. They go up when there's a fire somewhere. Insulin resistance, fat deliver, inflammation, or carb overload and the higher they climb the more your body is telling you hey something is wrong we are storing fat instead of burning it so let's make this also practical for you if your triglycerides are above 150 your metabolism is really struggling if they are above 200 you are very insulin resistant above 300 whoa the liver is waving a giant red flag saying hey help me i'm drowning in sugar and when triglycerides go over 500 or 1,000, that's when we worry about pancreatitis, which can destroy your pancreas and make you diabetic like overnight. But most people never even get close to that point because, you know, we can catch it early if they simply pay attention to this number. Now, some people have genetic problems, okay? So I'm not talking about those patients. So some people will have triglycerides in thousands, 1,000, 2,000, even if their diet is not bad. That's a special group of people. We're not talking about those. Now, here is the part that shocks people. High triglycerides show up years before your A1C rises. So they rise really, like before even your fasting glucose changes. They rise before your cholesterol looks abnormal. So they are the earliest, clearest sign that your metabolism is shifting in the wrong direction. So they are Literally, the first warning signs of future diabetes, your weight gain, stubborn belly fat, cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, fatty liver. Triglycerides predict these problems long before these problems really appear. And here's another truth. People don't really hear enough. Your triglyceride number after a typical meal is usually much higher than your fast triglycerides. So when you ask your doctor, hey, do I need fasting labs? They're going, yeah, fast, fast, you know, the, the, the fasting labs. I tell them you don't need to fast because I want to know how your triglycerides are when you don't fast. You know, if it is 1,000, 2,000 after you eat, we have a huge problem, dude, right? So I'm like, hey, as long as you tell me that you didn't fast, I'll pay attention to that. I'll account for that. But when you're always getting fast in triglycerides, you're not really knowing what's happening with your triglycerides after you eat. So that means your everyday eating habits, like your real world habits are definitely affecting your body more than just one fasting number on your lab. So fasting triglycerides are actually the most gentle version of the truth. So if 
they are high even while fasting. I would say my cutoff is really 100, over 100. Imagine, you know, you are insulin resistant. Now, let's talk about why triglycerides go up. Because once you know the cause, you can reverse it, right? And the cause is almost always the same story. Too many refined carbs, too much sugar, too many liquid calories. Like some people are addicted to Coke and they just won't give up. Or they're for a Pacino from Starbucks, right? So too much evening snacking. Some people come back home, they're tired, they're stressed out. They just keep snacking all night long. And too much insulin floating around telling your liver basically store, 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 store. You're not broken. You're not, you're not broken, you're just overloaded. The metabolism hates being overloaded. And here's a simple way to picture it. So when you eat sugar or fast carbs, things like bread, pasta, rice, cereal, juice, soda, crackers, right? Your blood sugar jumps, your insulin jumps. And when insulin stays high, your liver gets the message to convert that sugar into fat. Well, that fat, get packaged into triglycerides and shipped into your bloodstream. And if your muscles are not active, your triglycerides will not be picked up by your muscles, so they will keep circulating. So it's not really dietary fat doing this. It is carb-driven fat production inside your liver. That is where triglycerides come from. Well, the good news is triglycerides respond fast faster than any other lab. You can drop them dramatically in as little as three to seven days with the right changes. And I'm going to walk you through the exact steps. So I would say, let's start with the most powerful step, right? Cutting back on the refined carbs. Not eliminating all carbs, I'm not saying that, just the fast carbs, right? So when you remove the foods that spike your insulin, your liver stops pumping out triglycerides like a broken factory line. You're going to replace the fast carbs with fiber, protein, and whole foods, and your triglycerides will fall quickly. Next, start paying attention to liquid calories. Anything you can drink quickly that contains sugar, even natural sugars like juices or smoothies, sometimes people put a bunch of fruits in there, that goes straight into the liver. Now, especially fruit, right? This fructose straight goes to the liver. It's not, it's not even processed like, right. So juice, soda, sweet tea, flavored coffees, energy drinks, smoothies that are basically fruit milkshakes for you. These hit your liver like a fireball. Cutting them out is one of the easiest, highest impact wins for lowering triglycerides. Now, another big one is, again, evening snacking. The liver is most metabolically sensitive at night. So eating late or eating high-carb snacks before bed sends the triglycerides skyrocketing. So even if you fasted eight hours but you snacked all night long, your triglycerides may look high in the morning. If all you do is to stop eating after dinner, that's going to be enough to improve your triglycerides. So now let's talk about protein, right? Because protein is your metabolic anchor. So when you increase protein, a few things happen that directly lower triglycerides. So first of all, your blood sugar will stabilize and your insulin will drop and your cravings will drop. Your appetite naturally shrinks and your liver starts shifting from storing fat to burning fat. Protein is not just about muscle, okay? It is your metabolic stability. Now, exercise is another wonderful, powerful tool that I want you to get into. Exercise is another powerful tool, but I want to make something very clear. You do not need to kill yourself in the gym to lower your triglycerides. Just walking after meals can dramatically reduce the amount of triglycerides your liver produces. Now, if you don't have heart disease, if you're not very elderly, it is definitely a good idea to hit the gym and get your heart rate up and increase the intensity. That's going to definitely give you the best results. But if you're not able to because of life and work and whatnot, 10 minutes after lunch and dinner, simple, right? Doable and incredibly effective. Because most people are all or nothing, so they'll say, oh, well, I cannot exercise, I'll just sit on my butt all day, you know, nothing before meals or after meals. But you can th think about it constantly. You will just need to keep moving. And that will pay off, although it doesn't seem very significant in the beginning. Now, omega-3 fatty acids are extremely helpful, right? So people are asking, hey, what do I do for, from a diet standpoint or a supplement standpoint? Omega-3 fatty acids are in walnuts, chia seeds, your fatty fish, right? 
they directly lower triglyceride production inside your liver. So a lot of people don't like fish, but if you start eating fish or you know start taking very high quality fish oil, you start eating chia seeds or walnuts. These are not only heart healthy, but your triglyceride lowering foods. Now, also, I want to tell you about the elephant in the room here, right? The genetic. I said earlier that some people have genetically have high triglycerides, but even then, lifestyle changes will still work. We give them medications, but we still tell them, look, you got to get off the carbs, you got to get off the fat, saturated fat especially. Carbs is a primary driver. So in my practice, I've seen people with sky high triglycerides and 300, 400, 600, 1000, you name it. We cut them in half by just changing food timing, reducing carb spikes, improving sleep, increasing the activity. Now, as you know, genetics loads the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. And the opposite is always true. Lifestyle can unload it. Here's something else that I want you to understand. A triglyceride number does not just tell you about your metabolism today. It predicts your future. So if your triglycerides are high now, that means insulin resistance is already developing, right? Fatty liver is already starting your fat cells are already becoming inflamed and weight loss will become harder and harder unless you intervene today. But the beautiful part is that triglycerides respond very quickly. It's not like your LDL. So a lot of people will say, oh, I'll just diet and my LDL will go down. LDL doesn't go down easily with diet, but triglycerides does, okay? And when they go down, everything else starts getting better. So your energy, your hunger, your blood sugar, your liver enzymes, your ability to lose weight, your ability to maintain that weight loss. So here is my challenge to you. Look at your lost lab results. What were your triglycerides? Be honest with yourself, because if they are high, it is not a character flaw, right? It's not a failure. It is simply your body raising its hand and saying, hey, need, look, I need help, dude, do something. And you can absolutely fix this. And if this video gave you clarity, do me a favor, hit that like button so more people can find the truth instead of like same old outdated cholesterol focused advice. And drop a comment below telling me your triglyceride level, what you are planning to do about it. I'm here to guide you in every step. I may not respond to every question, but I'll take your questions and we have Dr. Ergen answers Friday. So you may be featured, your question may be featured on that Friday. So take care of yourself. And I'll see you in the next video.